Welcome to the original tale of Cinderella, where the glass slipper isn't the only thing that's sharp. Today we're diving into the dark and twisted version written by the brothers Grimm, Jacob and Wilhelm, the masterminds behind some of the most famous and frankly most unsettling fairy tales ever told. There once lived a kind little girl named Cinderella in a kingdom that was both far away and, to be honest, a little too dark for anyone's comfort. Naturally, calling her pleasant would be an overstatement, given that she was forced to scrub floors and clean fireplaces like a medieval maid on speed. You see, Cinderella's life was not exactly a Disney movie. No singing mice, no bibbidi-bobbidi-boo. Nope, just ash, soot, and a family that made toxic look like a day at the spa. Her mother had tragically passed away, as mothers often do in these tales, and her father, who clearly had a thing for red flags, married a woman so wicked she made expired milk look pleasant. This new stepmother came with a two-for-one deal, ugly, nasty daughters who could outvillain the Wicked Witch of the West any day. The stepsisters, who were more like villains in training, treated Cinderella like she was their help. And Cinderella, bless her heart, just sighed, mopped and whispered, well, at least I don't have to listen to their singing. But wait, life wasn't all grime and gloom. Cinderella had one tiny sliver of hope, a tree. Yup, you heard that right, a tree. After her mother's death, Cinderella planted a hazel tree at her mother's grave and cried so much over it that it magically grew into some kind of supernatural wish-granting plant. One day, News of a lavish royal ball spread like wildfire. Seeing that the prince had nothing better to do than host endless parties, he was actually searching for a bride at this coming ball. Naturally, Cinderella and all other eligible maidens were invited. Her stepfamily, however, laughed in her face and left her behind in a cloud of dust with nothing but a pile of lentils to fill her time. What nice, charming ladies they were. With her inexhaustible patience, Cinderella asked her bird friends to find the lentils from the ashes because really, who needs friends when you have birds for company? With the lentils sorted, Cinderella asked her stepmother if she could go to the ball. Stepmom responded with a sure honey that carried the same tone as in your wildest dreams, girl. She dumped a second pile of lentils into the fireplace. Cinderella once again summoned her feathered friends to save the day. But even after the birds had finished the task, the stepmother still wouldn't let her go. But our clever little minx Cinders had a tree up her sleeve, or rather in her yard. She ran to her mother's grave, hugged the hazel tree and poof, out came a dazzling dress and golden slippers. You know, the usual garden variety tree gifts. Dressed out in her dazzling new outfit, Cinderella marched off to the ball like she was the hostess. Now, let's talk about that prince. He was no ordinary prince. He was, well, just as clueless as any other fairy tale prince. When he saw Cinderella, he fell head over heels, not because of her charm or wit, mind you, but because she was wearing a sparkly dress. It was love at first glitter. They danced the night away, but Cinderella, with her impeccable sense of drama, ran off before midnight, leaving the prince wondering if he'd just imagined the whole thing. This didn't just happen once, but three nights in a row. Cinderella kept ghosting him like it was some kind of fun sport. On the third night, the prince got smart, finally, and had the staircase coated with tar, which is basically medieval superglue. When Cinderella made her grand dramatic escape, one of her golden slippers got stuck. The prince wised up and had a brilliant idea. The next day, the prince, shoe in his hand, set out on a kingdom-wide foot fetish tour to find his mystery woman. The stepsisters, sensing an opportunity, jumped in line to try on the shoe. The first sister's foot was too big, but in true psycho fashion, she chopped off her toes to make it fit. The prince, who clearly needed glasses, almost married her until a couple of birds pointed out the blood trail. It turns out that gore and royalty don't mix. 
The second sister gave it a try, but had the same problem. So she did what any reasonable person would do. She hacked off part of her heel. Same story. Prince got fooled, birds tattled, blood everywhere. The prince backed out faster than a runaway bride at midnight. Finally, Cinderella got her turn. The shoe fits like a glove. No surgery is required. The prince, probably exhausted from all the blood loss and drama, declared her his bride, and they rode off into the sunset. But wait, there's more. At their wedding, because nothing says happily ever after like some poetic justice, those birds returned to peck out the stepsister's eyes, karma at its best. So there you have it, a tale of love, murder and footwear with a side of ornithological vengeance. It's a real toe tapper, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed this fairy tale, though it's probably not the bedtime story you were expecting. And if there's another twisted tale or dark story you'd like me to cover, please drop it in the comments below. Because who at the end of the day just doesn't love a good bedtime story? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. Subscribing is completely free and it really helps us out so you can stay updated with our future videos.